Well, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration now predicting a hotter than normal summer this year. And with that comes the highly likely of uh, higher power bills. And with the added demands comes the increased chances of more power shutoffs, Cal ISO, which manages the flow of electricity across the state, says it has added more power storage after last year in hopes of preventing interruptions. Overall, we've seen to, to see the increase of temperatures routinely year after year. Uh, a lot of that's related to climate change as the rest of the world's heating up, so are we. We should expect numerous heat waves this summer and especially into the fall. Sometimes the fall months of September and October, we can have some of our warmest episodes. It's not just a convenience, it's a necessity. It's life or death in some cases. NOAA says there's a 33 to 50 percent probability that temperatures in Northern California will be above average this summer. And temperatures are only expected to climb with the El Nino warning the Pacific Ocean. This is just one example of how climate change is impacting the planet. First Alert Meteorologist Darren Peck gives us a 3D look at the changing environments. Well, we're having a pretty quiet spring around here. But if you look at the globe as a whole, there are some extreme things happening right now. And it's worth looking at the big picture and looking at the globe in several different ways as a whole to help us wrap our heads around the fact that we live in a very different climate now, even if things are fairly quiet in California. Although one of the things I'm gonna show you is right in our backyard. We're looking at sea surface temperatures on here. The deeper the shade of red, the warmer the, the ocean water is. And it makes sense. You're near the equator, the temperatures are higher. You go farther north, the temperatures are colder. We need to look at this in a different way though to pull out the story. And instead of looking at just sea surface temperatures, what we're concerned about is how far off of average are these? And now the story starts to come into view. You no doubt have heard that we're heading into an El Nino. And you can see that when you look down towards the equator in South America. In fact, we'll take a closer look at that. We covered this in detail in last week's Weather Extra with Paul Hagen. And we went into the likelihood of what impacts this may or may not have on our winter. We're not going to talk about that in this visit. I want to talk about El Nino's role on a global perspective in terms of helping to warm the planet. You've got a lot warmer ocean now, and it goes through this in cycles. In the last three or four years, we were in a La Nina, and that actually helped cool the planet a little bit. But now that we're in an El Nino, this is likely going to deliver the warmest year on record at some point in the next three or four years. That's how much this is going to give a bump to global temperatures. It's also probably going to push us up above the 1.5 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. And that's a mark that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said. That'd be the ideal if we could just get there and stop. They really hope we keep it at two. But they said, if you could do 1.5, that'd be great. But because of this intense El Nino, it's, there's a 66% chance that in the next four years, we're going to hit 1.5. We won't have to stay there, but we're going to hit it for the first time. It's kind of a landmark moment. That's one extreme happening on the warm side. Let's go to the other extreme, and this is the one in our backyard. And it was subtle on there, but maybe you can see I just put in the snowpack on the Sierra. Let's get rid of the sea surface temperatures, and let's put us front and center now. And you can see the Sierra Nevada there with the snowpack. No doubt you know this story. But it is the last week of May, and the snowpack in the Southern Sierra right now, for the last week of May, is 450% of average. It was the Southern Sierra that broke the all-time record for the most snow ever. The Central and the Northern Sierra didn't quite do it, depending on the statistics. But it's inarguable that the Southern Sierra had its snowiest winter on record. That's weird. We're talking about global warming, and here we are at the biggest snowpack. But it fits what we're, what we're being told by the science to a T. Most winters in the Sierra are going to come in probably drier and not as snowy. But when we get big winters, we're more likely to see the extreme years. There's more water vapor in the atmosphere to work with. So if you get the big winters, you can get a lot more snow than normal. And right now in our backyard in the Sierra is another example of one of these global extremes. Here's another one. On the other side now, the hot, dry, and smoky. What we're looking at here is the representation of smoke in the atmosphere coming off of the wildfires that have been burning in Alberta. Have you heard about this? Have you seen any pictures, all the smoky skies back east? Alberta, Canada just had its warmest mid-May heat wave ever on record. So while we're sitting here at home and we got a big snowpack and the rivers are flowing and the temperatures aren't doing anything crazy, there are still extremes happening across the globe, even for our neighbors. And the smoke in Alberta has been extreme. That's one of the, the other extremes I wanted to share with you on the global picture, thanks to an intense heat wave that was just up there in the middle of May. And that smoke, by the way, it wasn't just friends and family on the East Coast. That smoke's actually getting pulled all the way over towards Europe. So 
you know, this kind of fits in line with the word the pyrocene, which is a new word that's kind of getting thrown around. And we live in a very different fire regime now, thanks to global warming and years of mismanagement of our forests. Okay, here's the fourth and final view of an extreme. We're going to go back to the sea surface temperature anomalies now. We're going to spin the globe. We're going to go look at the other side. Because making news has been a Category 5 typhoon in Guam. And this is really the most significant story of the moment in terms of extremes. Category 5 typhoons and hurricanes, it's the same thing. By the way, we just label them typhoons when they're on this side of the globe. But can you see the big warm patch of water out there? There's Guam. The typhoon came at it from the east. And that means it went over a nice big patch of warm water. Guam is part of the United States. And if you look at the statistics of the last nine years, we've now had six extreme hurricanes, category four or five, make landfall in the last nine years. That's never happened before in that period of time in the historical record. And one of the other things that the climate community is telling us, remember that 1.5 degree we were talking about warming up above the average? If we get to that two degrees Celsius above average, they're saying we're likely going to be increasing the number of super strength hurricanes like that by about 10%. And we've got one out there now towards late May. Okay, that was the big picture view. You can think of it as science on a sphere. I think it's just a really helpful way to wrap our heads around the big picture. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagan will be in again with another one.